guys, uh, this is a re-upload. Uh, basically, I had a copyright claim on this video, and I decided to try to fix it so that I wouldn't have a copyright claim anymore. So, if you guys didn't see this video just yet, I hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, welcome to Multiverse. Today, we're going to take a look at the Justice League animated film, Crisis on Two Earths. At some point, DC started making uh, direct-to-DVD animated film, and this is one of the really good ones that they produced uh, since then. It is somewhat inspired by the Earth 2 comic book, but it pretty much built on top of, of uh, what was in Earth 2 and added so much to it that it pretty much is its own thing. There are a few bits that are superficially the same, like uh, Les Luthor going to another Earth to ask the help of the Justice League to help him out uh, to save his Earth. But so much more has been added to that that it it'll literally become its own thing, even though there are similarities. So just a fair warning, there will be spoilers ahead. So in short, this movie is awesome. If you haven't seen him, go watch it right now and then come back to watch this video. So again, you were, you were warned, past this point, there will be spoilers. So let's get started. So I mentioned how pretty much like the Earth 2 comic, uh, the, the movie starts with Lex Luthor asking the help of the Justice League to, to help him save his world. But the movie starts actually before that. In this version of the story, we actually see Lex Luthor before he goes to see the Justice League. Uh, we see him facing down the evil crime syndicate of America. And we see him also teaming up with a character that is known as the, the, the Jester, which is pretty much a, a heroic version of the Joker. So as much as in this universe, the Batman is an evil character that is called the Owlman, uh, in that version also, the Joker is actually a good guy, and he's known as the Jester. So you can see him fighting the evil crime syndicate with a whole bunch of uh, Joker-inspired gadgets. And also there is a whole bunch of Easter eggs. For example, the Martian Manhunter in this version is straight out of John Carter of Mars. Basically, they've, they've designed the Martian Manhunter as if he, he, was, he was one of the Thorn from the John Carter story. So if you know your DC history, or even better, if you know your, your sci-fi history more or less, or fant even fantasy history, you will see a lot of Easter egg in that film, and it will be glorious. So again, basically our friendly Sleuthor and the Jester are trying to get away from the crime syndicate. Uh, the Jester pretty much stays behind to give uh, Luthor some, uh, some time to be able to get away. And there's a pretty sweet uh, moment where the, the jester is facing down a couple of uh, members from, from the crime syndicate and he ends up uh, pretty much taking them down with him. Then the story starts somewhat uh, not unlike the Earth 2 comic where Lex Luthor pretty much asks to be able to, to talk to the Justice League and he kind of convinces them to, that he comes from another uh, dimension. Although in this, uh, in this version doesn't really have to try too hard. Uh, basically, Superman uses his X-ray vision, sees right off the bat that Lex Luthor has, uh, like, his organs are reversed, and he, dedu he deduces from there that he comes from an alternate reality. So after some discussions, obviously the Justice League decides to go and help out Luthor, and to try to help him uh, save his world. Uh, and of course, there's a few twists and turns here and there in the story. Uh, early on, you think that it's going to be just the Justice League trying to take out the Crime Syndicate, but then you realize that there's there's much more behind that. That the uh, Owlman seems to have uh, some sort of uh, personal vendetta, personal plan that he's planning to to, to do S plans that the rest of his group aren't even aware of. There's a Superwoman at some point who kind of gets uh, kind of guesses what he's planning to do and decides to help him. But most of the crime syndicate are pretty much oblivi oblivious to what Allman is doing, and they have no idea that uh, of what he's really planning to do. So pretty much the whole the story seems pretty straightforward at first, where the, the Justice League tries to stop the crime syndicate uh, and somehow fail for for various reasons. But then later on, when once everyone pretty pretty much uh, figures out what Allman is uh, is uh, is up to, obviously the crime syndicate don't want to die either, so they decide to not really join forces but they 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 stop fighting each other and then they they decide to help batman to be able to go and stop all man and of course and it ends up with a confrontation between all man and batman 
and Batman uh, manages to outmaneuver Allman and pretty much uh, stop him from destroying the multiverse, which is uh, pretty much Allman's uh, plan all along. Basically, all along, Allman was planning to destroy the multiverse uh, because the way he sees it, every action is meaningless, and the only action, the one action that actually holds any meaning at all, is to actually destroy the multiverse. So that is actually actually what Allman is planning to do. And he's planning to do that by destroying Earth Prime. So he manages to go to Earth Prime, and then uh, Batman manages to follow Allman to Earth Prime, and pretty much stops him from uh, destroying the multiverse. Uh, for the Justice League, we see most of, uh, of the main uh, members, Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, uh, John Jones, Superman, Batman, but we see also a whole bunch of uh, secondary characters like uh, Firestorm or Black Canary and uh, a few others that I failed to, to recall or mention. And for the Crime Syndicate we have uh, obviously we have the main characters like Ultraman, Superwoman, Allman, Johnny Quick and Power Ring but they, they again they literally expanded on what we knew about the Crime Syndicate by adding a whole truckload of characters that we never really saw before. It could be that they already existed in that universe and we just never saw them, but this was pretty much the first time that I saw them expand on the, the Crime Syndicate as much as they did. Uh, in the past, it was always the five uh, members, uh, but in, in this case, they've actually built on top of that and added a whole bunch of other members that we had never seen before. And they did that also later down in uh, the Forever, Forever Evil uh, storyline, but they actually did it here first. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, in Forever Evil, they took a lot of inspiration from this film uh, specifically. And as for the added members that we had never seen before, again, that becomes uh, a game of Easter eggs all of its own. Uh, we see characters that we, we didn't really think of or, or never really saw in that, that, uh, from that angle before. And again, it becomes pretty much a who's who uh, from the DC Universe, but also a who's who of alternate weird alternate distorted versions of the characters that we, we know uh, from the DC Universe. Like I mentioned before, we pretty much have the Martian Manhunter, who is pretty much a thorn from the film John Carter of Mars, but also, or even I mentioned the, the Jester, who actually was the Joker, but as a hero character. But also, there's a whole bunch of, of other characters that we we can spot throughout the film like in this single frame alone you can see the marvel family you can see metamorpho you can see the evil blue beetle which seems to be the orange beetle somehow uh, or we see red tornado which seems to be blue tornado and uh, we see what seems to be an, an alternate version of dr fate uh, we see an evil version of firestorm and so in this one frame alone, there's a lot of easter egg but it's like that throughout the whole film we see familiar characters but new versions of those familiar characters and in most cases new evil version although there is a twist where some some characters that we actually know to be evil in the DC universe obviously end up being good in this version seeing how everything is pretty much a mirror universe uh, characters that are good in our in the DC universe are actually bad in this universe and vice versa so it was it was fun to spot some alternate twisted version of characters we were familiar with and also for the, the even for the the five main members of the crime syndicate, uh, they pretty much redesigned the, the characters. Uh, they they didn't go that far from uh, some of the versions we knew. Uh, we can pretty much recognize uh, Ultraman, Allman, and uh, Superwoman pretty pretty easily. Uh, those who got pretty much the biggest uh, makeover are Johnny Quick and Power Ring. Um, I guess those being pretty much the, the lesser popular characters of the bunch. I guess it's easier to, to make redesign for them as opposed to uh, Ultraman, Superwoman and Allman are pretty much the backbone of the of the team the, the most popular characters of the bunch so I guess it's uh, it's easier to try to stay uh, more faithful to those to Ultraman, Superman, uh, Superwoman and Allman and it's easier I guess or more tempting to tweak and change uh, Johnny Quick and Power Ring to try to possibly make them more appealing or more popular uh, visually and design wise they moved away from uh, from the style we were used to seeing them use for the the justice league animated tv series or even the batman animated tv series they went in a, a somewhat more uh, different uh, direction uh, basically they 
For some reason, they keep on changing their styles uh, from film to film. Sometimes it's easy to understand why. Sometimes you'll see that they're trying to mimic a certain style. Uh, for example, when they adapt a story that comes straight from a comic, sometimes they'll try to uh, to mimic the style of the comic as opposed to coming with a, coming up with a style that actually works better for animation. Although they don't always do that. So sometimes they'll go to a completely different style and then they'll come back to like for example the style they're using for the Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. They reuse that style in a, in a handful of uh, straight to DVD films that they made. But also they've reused that style pretty much for the Young Justice TV show. It's a it's very close to uh, to what they're doing with Young Justice. And uh, again, they reuse that style for for a few of their animated movies. I'm not sure why they don't do all their animated movies in that style, which would make some sort of sense because uh, basically a lot of those actually seem to happen in the same continuity in the same uh, universe. So you would think that for that universe they would keep on using the same style, but no. Even then, they still they they'll do one film in a different style, then they'll come back to that style, then they'll do one two films in a different style, then they'll come back to that style. So they flip flop with the the animated styles uh, for some reason. Uh, it could be because of the director. Maybe one director especially like the styles and keeps on reusing it. Uh, Maybe some directors try to put in their own style. It's, it's it's hard to tell. The same with the voice acting. You would think that well, they found someone to to do the voice for Superman. They found someone to do the voice for Batman, and uh, the same for Wonder Woman. Let's use them throughout all our films. But no, again, from film to film, they keep on changing the voice actors. They keep on on uh, again flip flopping. Uh, sometimes they'll use Kevin Conroy. Sometimes they'll use someone else. Then they'll use Kevin Conroy again. Um, it's as if they cannot make up their mind as to do we change the voice for the character or do we stay with the the the, the what is now the iconic voice but anyway th this is just a personal pet peeve uh, basically it drives me nuts that they find a, a style that works really well for animation that looks all kinds of awesome or the same for the voices and then they decide to throw it all away and go in a completely different direction for the next film only to two films later come back to to that actual style or to those actual voice actors anyways so to get back to the film uh, for the designs they did a really good job with uh, pretty much all of the designs the design for black lightning kills me every time uh, it's 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 something that's straight out of the 70s and it works so well with the character and it, it cracks me up whenever I see it so overall the, the visually the, the film looks really well done the animation is really smooth and, and the action sequences are really well animated. So on that front they did a really good job. And even with the voice acting, uh, I think the voice that bothered me the most was probably Superman. I'm not sure why, it, it there was something off a bit. And I know that they've reused basically a, an actor who played Superman before, but somehow in, in this version I, there, was, there was something off about his performance. I just, I cannot put my finger on it. But the best voice of the lot has to be Allman played by James Wood. Uh, the, the, the delivery he has with, uh, with Allman, the, the way he delivers some of his lines, and some of his lines so in such a deadpan way, works so well with the, the attitude of the character, with, with, uh, with the Allman from that version of the, the, the crime syndicate, that casting James Wood for that was the perfect casting. And so I could I could go on and on uh, discussing that film, but I'm going to stop it here. Otherwise, uh, the video will never end. But in short, uh, if you want to know more about the Crime Syndicate, which will be the next major villains we will face in this universe online, I would strongly recommend watching this film. Uh, it, it's an it's a great film all of all on its own. And if you want to have more information about the Crime Syndicate, uh, it's an even better film for that. Uh, I will probably make an upcoming video about the the crime syndicate from the forever evil storyline although I would have to reread it I haven't read it in a while uh, and I might also do a, a video about the original crime syndicate I realized that I, I probably should have started with that but eh, we'll see so anyway so again in short this is an awesome film if you're a DC fan you should watch it if you're a Justice League fan you should watch it if you're a crime syndicate fan you should watch it so that's pretty much it for now, guys. So as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.